Um, today I'm gonna be feeding the claim that is uh, sweatshops are not only affecting Kohli brands but also impacting the lives of workers. My claim is that although sweatshops impact the lives of the workers in many ways, um, many of these impacts can be positive for the workers and the economy of the countries they're in. My opponent's first claim was sweatshops create a drastic effect on clothing products. This is a fact, but it could be positive too. For instance, but in these corporations that they that the sweatshops are are um, are violating the code of conduct, it's because many of these sweatshops they're not owned by the giant corporations. Instead, they move it. They sign a contract with a third party. In these third party, they're not from the same um, countries that the giant corporations are from. Instead, they're in many third world countries such as Cambodia and Vietnam. <coughs> so it's sometimes they do have contracts to keep the code of conduct, but during these code of conduct, it's not necessarily known if they reinforce it or upkeep it in the sweatshops. For instance, Apple had um, contracts with a company called Frosticon to create to help make their products. But in numerous occasions, uh, Frosticon had had um, controversy regarding worker conditions. But over time, Apple and Proxicon helped each other to improve these, these conditions. In another um, case, it was when Nike had a bunch of sweatshops in Vietnam, and in numerous occasions, um, many reported poor working conditions in it. But in the present time, once they received those backlash, um, many of them improved by improving their work condition and imagine and by finding the root cause of this. They not only worked smarter, but worked smarter and not harder, and collaborated instead. My opponent's second claim was that a big percentage of children working in special don't receive the receive education they deserve. Education in some of these countries, my opponent did not state if they were given they were private or public. And and she did not mention if about sweatshops in first world country where child labor is illegal. Um, in many countries, such as Cambodia, Vietnam, and neighboring countries, jobs are more of a necessity rather than education. For instance, in an interview done by New York Times, they interviewed a sweatshop, sweatshop worker in Cambodia and where he and his daughter both worked at a sweatshop. His daughter was a lot school age. School age, school age and received and worked in a sweatshop where she received two dollars, two dollars. In Cambodia, two dollars they could basically live off of it for a bunch of times. And and um, he stated that she didn't she didn't go to school, but was glad that his daughter had this job because it helped support his family. So in a sense, in countries like this, having a job is more question than than going to school. In my opponent's third claim, she stated that if a worker was paid a decent amount, people would be paying a little more for clothing than they do now. However, in a, in a study done by the American Sociological Association uh, using socks, they found that although 60% of their subjects said they would buy socks not made from sweatshops, only 20% actually did. Through the study, it shows that many people still care about the price of their socks, or well, uh, products of their product, the price of their products. But um, and they state that they would pay more, but when they actually do intend to do it, they don't actually follow through with it. In conclusion, sweatshops has its flaws, but many corporations and workers depend on these sweatshops in in order to provide for people like us or and workers look into these sweatshops to find jobs. It, they also help many um, emerging economies <coughs> to improve it too. And
Right, I think you need to articulate a little more clearly at the beginning, but as you transfer to the body of the argument, it's a little clearer. Um, it sounds like you're going to stick primarily to counterclaims on most of these points, which I guess is okay, although I think that there might have been some issues with the advocates' uh, information and whether or not their claims were adequately supported, but you're pretty much willing to go the argument that says, in fact, there are things that are being done, uh, which, is, which is fine. On the first point, uh, you argue that uh, conditions have changed. You use a couple of examples where there were problems, but they later got fixed. I could use a source citation on that. I, you know, I don't know that Nike has gotten better in Vietnam. I don't know that the Apple thing got resolved. You say that that's the case, uh, but I didn't really get any quotes there. The one place where you did cite some information uh, more specifically was a New York Times interview with the Cambodian father and daughter. And so we got some data there, although a lot of that sounds like it's being paraphrased and I would, I would much prefer that you had the direct quotes there. There was some information that sounded like it might have come from the same article, but it was hard to tell. Make sure that you're consistent about citing the information in your argument. I did think that you labeled the secondary claims as you're responding to them pretty clearly, so we're not getting lost too easily. I do sometimes think that your counterclaims need to be stated a little bit more definitively, make it uh, a, a clear declarative sentence. For example, you uh, had that argument on the third point that, about the consumers. It basically comes down to consumers pay more pen attention to price than they do to their values. Uh, it's a simple statement like that. Maybe people say they feel one way, but when they actually do something, money is what is the bottom line for them, even if it is just a few cents. So that's a direct contradiction of the argument that they're making that the cost would be relatively small. And you're saying, yeah, but the cost, if it goes up, it's relatively small. It has an impact. People don't purchase those things. Uh, so I think that the, I think you've got that's a, a good piece of evidence that was cited pretty clearly, and I thought that that worked pretty well. And you need to, like I say, be consistent about doing those things. Thank you. <coughs>